Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to talk about triple integrals. So the way I'd like to introduce triple integrals is by um, just use, computing a very simple example. We're going to use a triple integral to compute the volume of a three-dimensional region. And to motivate this technique, we're going to go back to a previous chapter here, and we're going to recall how to use a uh, single integral to compute the length of an interval and how to use a double integral to compute the area of a two-dimensional region. So let's suppose that we have an interval i that starts at a and ends at b. Well, the length of that interval will be the integral of 1 dx, where x ranges from a to b, because you're going to get b minus a from that, which is exactly the length of that interval. Similarly, if we have a two-dimensional region r, and we want to compute the area of that region R, we just compute the double integral of 1 dA over that two-dimensional region. And in a similar fashion, the volume of a three-dimensional region is going to be computed as the triple integral of 1 over that three-dimensional region. So let's try applying that for a cube. We'll just do a very simple example here. Now we can see that for this cube, x ranges from negative 1 to 1, y ranges from 0 to 2, z ranges from 1 to 3. Those, are, those will be our limits of integration for our triple integral. But, you know, back in a um, simple, uh, you know, geometry class that like you guys would have taken previously, we just know that the volume of this cube is side cubed uh, s times s times s for each of our side lengths. So 2 cubed is 8. So we know we're going to get 8 from this. But let's try doing a triple integral anyway. Um, so you can see that uh, my bounds for x and y and z become my limits of integration here. My integrand is 1 because I'm trying to do a volume calculation for this three-dimensional region. And I'm not going to go through the actual steps of this integral. You guys can verify this yourselves. But you're going to get 8, as you might expect. Now, the thing is that... Um, we're going to get to calculations that are not just volume calculations. So triple integrals will be useful because sometimes our region is not going to be a nice looking cube, in which case a triple integral might be useful for computing the volume of your three dimensional region. And we are going to have situations where our integrand is going to uh, equal something other than one. It's not going to be a straight up volume calculation. So uh, right now, triple integrals seem kind of trivial. We'll see pretty soon that they are actually pretty interesting. All right, so let's try example number two here. Again, we're going to use a triple integral to compute the volume of a three-dimensional region. In this case, I'm looking for the volume of the region that's above the xy plane, uh, the xz plane, the yz plane, and below the plane given by the equation x plus y plus 4z is equal to 8. Sounds pretty complicated, but when you plot it all out, uh, it's just a pyramid. Um, so you can see that on three sides, we just have a triangle on one of the coordinate planes. And then um, this equation, x plus y plus 4z is equal to 8. If you solve that for z, that gives you this blue plane that's kind of sitting on top of our pyramid there. Um, z is equal to x minus 8 minus x minus y all over 4. All right, so if we're setting up a triple integral, we need z top and z bottom, z top and z bottom. Um, and so z top is this equation, z is equal to 8 minus x minus y over 4, and z bottom is the xy plane, also known as z is equal to 0. Now, to set up this triple integral, you do have to uh, use a little bit of your algebraic background here. So we know that the next thing that we want is, um, basically, we want to think about the intersection between z top, this plane right here, and z bottom z equals 0. So we're going to set those equal to each other. So we take 8 minus x minus y over 4, z top, and set that equal to 0, z bottom. And we're going to solve that for y. And we get the equation of the line y equals 8 minus x, which is right here. y is equal to 8 minus x. Um, now that's our y top. And we could see that our y bottom will be the equation y is equal to 0. And then finally, we could see that x is ranging from 0 to 8. So we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 8. 
And there's our triple integral setup. That's going to give us the volume of this region in three-dimensional space. Now, if we want to crunch some numbers here, um, pretty straightforward. We know that the integral of 1 with respect to z is equal to z, and then we're going to plug in z top and z bottom. And our integrand now for our double integral is going to be 8 minus x minus y. And then we're just going to kind of keep working through this. Notice I took a 1 fourth out just to get that out of the way. And we're going to keep on going here. Again, I'm not really going to go through each individual step of this triple integral because this is something that you're well equipped to do on your own. Just uh, try to make sure that you're keeping track of these limits of integration here. So notice how I'm writing y equals 8 minus x and y equals 0, just to kind of make sure I'm um, plugging in the correct quantity into the correct variable. And you keep working through that. Eventually, we get down to a single integral that you could have easily done in your Calc BC class last year. And then we get 64 over 3, which is going to be the volume of this pyramid in three-dimensional space. Now, again, um, someone could reasonably push back at this and say, eh, you didn't really need calculus for this, Mr. Grittoni. Um, I know that the volume of a pyramid is one-third times the area of the base times the height, and uh, I can easily figure out the height of this pyramid. It's two, and the base is just a triangle. I know how to find the area of a triangle. Um, so, you know, I could just do one-third times 32 times two and get 64 over three, and that's going to be the same as what you got. And that is, of course, true. Um, the point here is to introduce the technique of using triple integrals. And uh, remember that we will have regions where the volume is not well described by a simple geometry formula. And we are going to have examples where the integrand is something not equal to 1, meaning it's not going to be a volume calculation at all, um, meaning that we really do need a triple integral in order to tackle the problem. So we'll see some more examples like that coming up later in the slideshow. All right, so now let's talk about doing the same exact problem again, but um, by changing up the order of integration. So it, this is going to be the same exact answer as the previous slide, but now instead of doing a dz dy dx integral, I'm going to compute it as a dy dx dz integral. And this is just to give you an example of how to change the order of integration in case you're asked to do that, or in, uh, sometimes you have a compelling reason to change the order of integration. So in this case, um, the solution is very, very similar. Like the steps are very similar. We're still going to take x plus y plus 4z equals 8. And uh, instead of thinking about a z top and a z bottom, we're going to think about a y top and a y bottom. So I'm going to take that equation and solve it for y. And that's going to give you y equals 8 minus x minus 4z. That's my y top. Now my y bottom is the plane y equals 0 also known as the xz plane. You can kind of see it in the picture here. If you imagine y um, being your top and bottom now, um, this is your y top and your y bottom is this little triangle right here. And that little triangle sits on um, the xz plane, right? Yeah. Now we're gonna think about the intersection between y top and y bottom. You just set them equal to each other, right? The intersection between y top and y bottom comes from setting x plus y plus 4. Or, um, actually, I should take the solved version of that. So I should take uh, y equals 8 minus x minus 4z. That's my y top. And I'm going to set it equal to my y bottom, which is 0. There we go. And I'm going to take this equation now and solve that for x, um, just because I was asked to do a dy, dx, dz integral. So that's the only reason I'm now solving for x. And so when you do that, you get x equals 8 minus 4z. That's the equation of this line in the xz plane. So that's x equals 8 minus 4z. And you can also see what our x bottom is, which is x equals 0, right, right here, x equals 0. And then we can also see that z ranges from 0 to 2. So that's how we get our limits of integration. It's more geometric and, and algebraic than it is 
um, you know, a calculus idea. You're really thinking about pictures and graphs. All right, so now we have this integral set up. And if you crunch the numbers on it, you're going to get the same answer as the previous example, 64 over 3. Um, changing the order of integration, this technique works for even more complicated regions, but this gives you a nice basic example for seeing how to change up the order of integration, um, either out of necessity if you realize you need to do it in order to solve a problem, or because you might you know, have a test question or a quiz question at some point where you're told um, change the order of integration to this particular order just to demonstrate that you have mastered that particular skill. And finally, thanks for tuning in to this video, guys. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how to do a 3D change of variables. So basically taking the technique with the Jacobian determinant that we did in two-dimensional space and lifting that up to three-dimensional space.